Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today from London is Christopher de Belleg, who is recognized as a, an expert, an analyst, uh, not just on Iran, about which he's written two books, but also uh, on Turkey, where he lived uh, for a period of his life. He's now in London working on issues having to do with Muslim thought, but we're still calling on him to help us understand the international perceptions in some ways of the Iranian elections. At the end of the day, you would think we'd be talking to Christopher about uh, Turkey, his book on Eastern Turkey called Rebel Land, Varto, the Armenians, the Kurds of that region. But Christopher, welcome to CivilNet, and really we do want to talk about Iran today. We're delighted to do that, Salpi, and thank you for having me. Um, thank you. You know, Iran is our neighbor. Everything that happens with Iran will, does impact Armenia, and yet there are so few people who can put all of these issues in context. And really, that's what I'd like to ask you to help us do today. The international perceptions of Iran seem so black and white, so categoric, so binary. You know, there are the clerical leaders, and then there are these other guys who want something different. And we try to place the new president, who is considered more reformist than many expected, uh, would have a chance to win. Uh, we want to put this new president in one of two camps. What are we doing? Are we getting this wrong again? Well, I think it's a natural human impulse to try and um, sort out your feelings towards um, someone you don't particularly well understand according um, to the terms of reference that you're used to. And if it helps people, um, particularly in the West, to look at Iran as um, divided between reformists and conservatives, that can help up to a point. But there is a point after which you have to start being a little more, nu little more nuanced. And this is the place where you would expect um, the uh, analysts and, and experts of, uh, um, in foreign affairs who advise their nations um, to help their nations to achieve this kind of understanding. The problem is um, that the analysts and experts that we rely upon um, to guide foreign policy have been lacking in the Iranian case for reasons of diplomatic um, isolation that have uh, affected Iran um, more or less since the revolution. So as a result, we do take, as you put it, a very binary view, a very simplistic view of Iran. And this feeds into public policy. It makes changing public policy um, far more difficult from a Western perspective because it means actually beginning by challenging those perceptions. And yet, we look forward to elections in every country, always, as that opportunity to, uh, Hillary Clinton said, reset, right? This is an opportunity to reset. Are we able to take the results of this election and give the resetting a chance? Does that look hopeful? Well, let's unpack the we. Uh, the we is principally the United States. Um, and its Western allies, who to uh, varying degrees are united in their desire to prevent Iran from achieving um, nuclear weapons status. Um, but uh, if you look at the region, the region that you inhabit, you will see that the we is far more um, nebulous, it's far less categorical and clear-cut. There are people um, in the neighborhood of Iran who understand Iran's concerns, who understand why Iran might feel embattled, or indeed under threat, and they look at Iran in a slightly different way. Um, from an American perspective, and of course the American-Iranian relationship is the most important one, um, particularly now that we have this new president, um, can we do it? I don't know if we can, because the American um, political uh, mindset is, um, has been set on Iran for the past 33 years, and to unset that, requires a degree of political courage, vision, and energy that I don't think the Obama administration is willing to expend on, a, on an issue such as Iran. Um, were that issue, were that energy to be expended, then I think there could be a change. I think you have to start looking at, the, um, uh, at, at someone like Rouhani, not simply as a reformist or as a conservative, and there are elements of, of both in that makeup, but also as someone who has represented um, Iran diplomatically at the most sensitive stage in nuclear negotiations in the past, who has shown what he's capable of doing and what he's capable of giving. And he is capable of giving a certain amount of... Um, uh, 
it's giving a certain amount of um, uh, a sense of trust to his interlocutors. But at the same time, he's not willing to give up what the Iranians believe is their inalienable right to have a peaceful nuclear um, uh, power apparatus and program. In 2009, it appeared as if the, the, the street uh, expressions of Iranian political thought was in fact moving the West, the US, to rethink its own uh, paradigm uh, of Iranian politics. This time around, is it going to take a different domestic political situation perhaps that the new president can help create perhaps that might lead the West, the U.S., to new thinking? Well, the U.S. has been slightly caught um, between its desire on the one hand to facilitate regime change um, in countries uh, it doesn't like, um, such as Iran, and at the same time to deal with the realities as they exist. And you can't, I don't think, do both at the same time very successfully. And that's what happened after 2009, where Obama was... Um, some people felt slow off the mark in coming out in support of demonstrations against um, the Islamic Republic. Um, and when he did so, uh, he was slammed by the Islamic Republic as interfering, and he was no longer trusted by them. So you have to be either hard-nosed or idealistic, and it's very difficult to be both. I think that over the last four years, Obama has um, come to the conclusion that um, you cannot count on Iran changing in the way that you want it to. You have to deal with the, the reality as it exists. And in my opinion, what he has tried to do, he has tried to park Iran in a space where um, he can tell the Israelis that we're putting pressure on Iran and we're not going to let them do um, what you fear they want to do. We have made that absolutely clear. But at the same time, we're not going to permit you, far less are we, going to launch the kind of attack that would throw the region into chaos. He's tried to park Iran um, to one corner of the uh, Middle Eastern map and concentrate on other things that are more important to him. Um, but Iran keeps nudging back into the picture. And I think the example of Syria is such a salient one that we should bring it up. Um, Iran's importance in the Syrian conflict um, is, so, is so great is so considerable that to try and achieve uh, a, a peaceful solution to that conflict without in some way involving Iran is akin to trying to um, set up the new state of Afghanistan after, 2000, after the 2001 invasion without involving Iran. And back in 2001, the Americans did involve Iran, and Iran's contribution um, was highly positive and highly constructive. Iran can be um, coaxed, enticed, um, seduced into being a positive member of the international community. What it has is it has a beef with a, a, a competitor that wants to um, put it back in its box and says you cannot be a regional player. Well, Iran says, I want to be a regional player. I'm going to be a regional player. And the line that Rouhani will take forward, the new president, will be a mix of these two aspects, their, their inalienable rights as well as their perceived place in regional politics. Yes, I think Rouhani represents a very interesting strain in Iranian political thinking. He's from, um, he's, he's a cleric naturally. Um, he's also um, pragmatist, he's, he, he's deeply pragmatist. Um, in the way that he approaches um, international relations. That is to say that he cannot, in my, as far as I can make out, he cannot see the point in willfully isolating Iran from the rest of the world. He doesn't regard that as an end in the way that some far hard, harder liners believe and which for many years sustained Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad created this kind of victim complex um, that through his um, rhetoric that we all know about, that um, allowed him to say, I'm standing up to the rest of the world. And to a great extent, the um, Iranian political establishment, the hard -light establishment, for most of his eight years, um, supported him in, in that. Now, Rouhani came at it from a different way. 
saying there is no intrinsic virtue in having no friends. We need to have friends. It's how the world works. And now we need to start making friends or create, recreating old bonds that have existed and have been allowed to wither. And the question is whether, on the one hand, um, the powers that be in Iran, the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei and others, will permit him to go, um, perhaps to take those few steps that he would like to step to take in order to create a sense of confidence, but also on the other side, whether Obama and the Americans um, are willing to get into um, what could be a far more ambiguous um, negotiation with Iran, within Iran that you cannot so easily damn and blacken as um, simply unacceptable in, in, in every way, but which has a far more human, a far more likable, a far more understandable face. And again, that goes back to the patience and the commitment of the Obama administration. Their ability to direct energy and attention at, 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 a, at an issue that they don't particularly um, relish. It's you know, I didn't expect this conversation to focus so much on the American perspective, and yet you've used the same words for the new Iranian president, Rouhani, as many analysts use for President Obama, and that is pragmatist. Um, so if between these two pragmatist presidents something can move forward, you're saying many things will move forward, that the U.S. really is the driver in this Iranian standoff. Well. The, the, American, um, the American position in the Middle East is now uh, far less dominant than it was, um, as we can see by events that are unfolding in, in Egypt right now, as we see um, from the American um, inability to stop events in Syria. But the Iranian situation is slightly different. The Iranian political um, mindset still considers America to be um, absolutely their number one interlocutor and the solution to this standoff of the last 33 years as absolutely imperative and I think the, uh, the Iranian population sees it in that way. It is hard to imagine an Iran prospering um, going forward becoming a happy confident um, uh, less furtive sort of place if there is not some kind of solution to this um, this 33-year uh, um, standoff with America. So the Americans are highly important. And this, the idea of two pragmatists coming together is, is I think, too fanciful. Um, there are so many other factors involved, um, as we've discussed over the past few minutes, that might complicate things. But I do think um, that Rouhani's election is... Um, naturally a highly positive um, uh, step forward. Well, as, as an immediate neighbor of Iran's, we certainly uh, do hope that that positive step forward is taken into consideration and, and worked with internationally. Uh, Christopher de Belegan, uh, internationally recognized uh, analyst, expert on Iran, Iranian politics, Muslim thought, thank you for joining us on CivilNet. Thank you for having me. And thank you for following us on CivilNet. <laughs>